Until the time of Ramsonitis, Egypt, so the priests told me, was in all ways well governed and greatly prospered. But Cheops, who was the next king, brought the people to utter misery. For, first, he shut up all the temples, so that none could sacrifice there, and next, he compelled all the Egyptians to work for him, appointing some to drag stones from the quarries in the Arabian mountains to the Nile, and the stones being carried across the river in boats. Others were charged to receive and drag them to the mountains called Libyan. They worked in gangs of a 100,000 men, each gang for three months. For ten years, the people were afflicted in making the road whereon the stones were dragged. The making of which road was, to my thinking, a task but a little lighter than the building of the pyramid. For the road is five furlongs long and ten fathoms broad, and raised at its highest to a height of eight fathoms, and it is all of stone polished and carven with figurines. The ten years aforesaid went to the making of this road, and of the underground chambers on the hill whereon the pyramids stand. These the king meant to be burial places for himself, and encompass them with water, bringing in a channel from the Nile. The pyramid itself was twenty years in the making. Its base was square, each side eight hundred feet long, and its height is the same. The whole is of stone, polished and most exactly fitted. There is no block of less than thirty feet in length. This pyramid was made like a stairway with tiers or steps. When this, its first form, was completed, the workmen used levers made of short wooden logs to raise the rest of the stones. They heaved up the blocks from the ground onto the first tier of steps. When the stone had been so raised it was set on another lever that stood on the first tier, and a lever again drew it up from this tier to the next. It may be that there was a new lever on each tier of the steps, or perhaps there was but one lever, and that easily lifted, which they carried up to each tier in turn, when they had taken out the stone. I leave this uncertain, both ways being told me. But this is certain, that the upper part of the pyramid was the first finished off, then the next below it, and last of all the base and the lowest part. There are writings on the pyramid in uh, Egyptian characters showing how much was spent on purges and onions and uh, garlic for the workmen, and so far as I well remember, the interpreter when he read me the writing said that 1,600 talents of silver had been paid. Now, if that is so, how much must needs have been expended on the iron with which they worked and the workmen's food and clothing, seeing that the time aforesaid was spent in building? and the hewing and carrying of the stone and the digging out of the underground parts was, as I suppose, a business of long duration. And so evil a man was Cheops, that for lack of money he made his own daughter to sit in a chamber and exact payment. How much I know not, for they did not tell me this. She, they say, doing her father's bidding, was minded to leave some memorial of her own, and demanded of everyone who sought intercourse with her that he should give one stone to set in her work. And of these stones was built the pyramid that stands midmost of the three, over against the Great Pyramid. Each side of it measures one hundred and fifty feet. Cheops reigned, so the Egyptians said, for fifty years. At his death he was succeeded by his brother Chephren who bore himself in all respects like Cheops. Chephron also built a pyramid of less size than his brother's. I have, myself, measured it. It has no underground chambers, nor is it entered like the other by a canal from the Nile, but the river comes in through a built passage and encircles an island in which they say Cheops himself lies. This pyramid was built of the same bigness as the other, save that it falls forty feet short of it in height. It stands near to the Great Pyramid. The lowest layer of it is variegated Ethiopian stone. Both of them stand on the same ridge, which is about a uh, hundred feet high. Chephron, he said, reigned for fifty-six years. Thus they reckon that for a hundred and six years Egypt was in great misery, and the temples so long shut were never opened. So much do the people hate the memory of these two kings, that they do not greatly wish to name them, and called the pyramids after the shepherd Philetus, 
who then pastured his flocks in this place.